Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today I'm going to show you how to solder in tight spaces like a pro. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumperman Tech. Many have watched my previous video on how to solder copper pipe and have been asking me if I can create a video to solder in a tight space. When it comes to soldering in a tight space, it's all going to come down to having the right equipment, the right tools, and the right preparation. Let's say you need to solder in an area where you're up against a wall, you're in a corner, you have obstacles such as a wire or a component that you don't want to burn. The first thing you want to do is fireproof that area so you don't burn whatever it is that is next to you. Whatever you have in your way that you can physically move out of the way, start by doing that. If it's some wires, use a cable tie or even some tape and just move it out of the way. Clear your space. Once we moved everything out of the way that we possibly can, we're going to protect our space and whatever it is that we don't want to burn with a heat barrier. This is the Diversitec Blaze Barrier. This is a fireproof mat. Our area is now protected with the fire barrier. And now whatever it is that was in our way that we were afraid to burn, in this case, the wool, is now protected from that. The real trick and best advice I can really give is to dry fit your piping, configure everything without making your connections, and then pull it out of your space. Make all your connections in a place where you're comfortable. That's really the trick. So the only connections you really want to make is your last connection in that tight space. So let's say we already dry fitted our piping, all our other connections are complete, and all we have to solder last is this elbow. So now we're in this space and we protected everything that we didn't want to burn with the fire barrier. And now we can move on. If for some reason you cannot make it to this step because you have too many obstacles in your way, if it's wires, if you need to cut them and splice them, then you have to do that. If you're so close up against a wall and you need to cut the wall, then you need to cut that wall. Whatever you got to do to make that space, you need to get creative and you have to make that space. If you need to get the job done, you need to get the job done. We can now move forward and begin prepping our pipe. The first step is going to be to sand down our copper. We're going to sand down the outside of our pipes and the inside of our fittings. Let's pull this out. We're going to push this copper back and we're going to sand down in our space but the elbow we can take out and sand down comfortably where we are comfortable. Let's sand down the inside of our fitting. Since we can't spin this pipe and we can't use the brush, I'm gonna use that piece of sandpaper and the trick is to wrap it around just like this and just keep sanding down with this same principle. Now that looks absolutely fantastic and we're going to do the same for the other pipe. Now both sides of our pipes are now sanded and the next step would be to deburr our pipe which many skip but it is good practice. As far as having a clean edge for the outside of your pipe, you can always want to have a fresh cut at the end of your pipe. But let's say you have a tool and you can't get this to spin all the way around. That's why it's also key to have options. It's all about having options. In that case, I will use the smallest pipe cutter that I have so I can go around and make a fresh cut. I prefer to ream my pipe with a tool like this, but sometimes it's too bulky and I do not have the space, so it's key to have options. In this case, I'll be using this style of tool to deburr the inside of our pipe. Next, we can apply flux to the outside of our pipes and the inside of our fittings. As far as the excess flux, you can just take your finger and wipe that away. You really just want that 
on the inside of your pipe. I prefer to use map gas. This is actually map pro, but propane is also possible. Today, I'm gonna to be using the Burnsomatic TS8000. This is a high intensity torch, but what I love about this is that since I have this regulator here, I can control the flame. So that's also important when dealing with a tight space. You don't want that thing on high heat. You wanna be very precise with your work. In this demonstration, I'm gonna be using 95.5 solder, and this is lead free. We can begin to light our torch and begin soldering, but just for reference, I just wanna show you guys that I just have enough space just to fit my finger behind this pipe, and that's how close we are. Another tip and trick that is key is that when I roll out my solder, I'm actually gonna put a little hook on the end so I could actually make my way around the pipe in that tight space. If you have any smoke alarms, be sure to shut them down prior to lighting your torch. And before we actually start this demonstration, I would just like to explain what we're actually doing here. So in this case, we're actually gonna be only heating up the fitting itself. Inside we have flux, and when we apply heat to the fitting, and when we spread our solder, it's actually gonna get sucked into the pipe by something called capillary action. So we're gonna focus on heating the fitting, and the solder will get sucked into it and make our connection. If you were the one operating the torch, it's always good to have somebody on standby as your fire guard with a fire extinguisher ready to roll. Without any further ado, let's burn this place down. Please excuse the outside noise. I have the windows open. Be sure to ventilate your space. Let's do this thing. I'm gonna start by heating up the fitting. I like to do this with precision. Done. Once you finish soldering, you're gonna to wanna to use a little pocket mirror so you can look in the back of the fitting to see if you actually got it. This tool is super key. So like this, we're gonna have a look around. As you can see, we have solder there. What we have, can we see? We got a little bit of drip here, but you know, when you're working in a tight space, you're not looking for perfection. You're just looking for no leaks. So let's see if we got everything. And we do. This looks absolutely fantastic. This looks pretty good. As long as this doesn't leak, I'm getting paid and I get to go home. We're gonna take off our fire barrier and see what kind of job it did. I just have it taped on the top. Just like that. Looks perfect as if no work was done here, nothing is burned. And this is just absolutely fantastic. Now that's what I call a beautiful thing right there. And if anybody found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you all next time.